I'm gonna record. Perfect. Um, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for coming back. And uh, today we are interviewing, uh, we, I mean, I'm talking whether you're in our both said living rooms, one in one side of the world, in the continent of the United States, uh, North America, that continent. And, and then we have Carrie, who's in the UK. So uh, Carrie, I'm super Hello. excited to have you today. <laughs> You're so adorable. I can't wait. I just am so excited to hear what you have to talk about. Um, and, you know, we can talk about existential crises afterwards. And um, yeah, because I don't know if you were on last night, but I was talking about my own personal existential crisis. That just no, kinda... I wasn't on last night. No. Oh. So, yeah. Well, you did miss a lot of singing, too. So <laughs> anyway, I love Kim... your lines. I love, you love... them. I do. I'm so glad because I kind of am nuts when I'm on there because it just I'm just myself. But anyway, this is not about me. This is about you talking about your experience, your near death experience. And, you know, I always say it with every time I'm like this isn't just about you died and went to the other side. Let's talk about what happened there. Um, so where do you want to start? Do you want to start before it? Do you want to I'm, you jump in your story any place you feel comfortable? Okay. I will probably start with a bit of background, I think, okay. first, to explain how it leads up to it, because um, I, I found it all really interesting and I didn't actually realise it was happening. Well, you don't, do you? I don't think you realise what you're going through until after the event. And then you kind of analyse it and pretend it didn't happen. And then you come to the realisation that it happened. That's how it felt for me anyway. Um, so yeah if you want me to i'll just get on with my story if that works for you absolutely it works i can't wait i'm super excited i'm here for it Carrie. i hope, I hope you find it interesting i feel like it's going to be really boring <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody says that's what everybody um, says but feel free to ask me questions like okay any way through oh that's perfect completely cool. all right right so 2005 I was 22, okay. something like that. Um, and I was pregnant with my first child. And the pregnancy had been absolutely perfect, like textbook, beautiful pregnancy. I'd lost loads of weight, which was always a bonus, but not because I was unhealthy or anything. Um, I've always been a bit of a chunk and in my pregnancies I tend to like lose weight so I felt fabulous um, <laughs> <laughs> and you couldn't tell I was pregnant unless you looked at me sideways and I had okay. this really petite tiny beautiful bump um, and so on the evening of the 27th of February I went into no the 26th of February I went into labour mm -hmm. and I took myself to bed uh, I felt rotten. I didn't really understand what was going on because it was my first labor. You know, I'd never uh -huh. experienced it before. And I woke up at something silly o'clock in the morning and I felt this warm kind of stroking maternal, like warmth, comfort on my on my left shoulder. Mm -hmm. And I instantly knew it was my my nan who'd passed away years ago when I was six. OK, I instantly recognized it was her that was with me and she was comforting me um because I started to have a, like a massive panic um and I was stressed about what I didn't know what was coming up and giving right. birth and all of those things so that in itself was a was a lovely experience to go through knowing that I knew it was her having that kind of spiritual encounter and it really really calmed me down um for what was then about to, to happen so mm -hmm. it, it transpires that my labor went very quickly from there so it, it say for example I had that experience at like four or five in the morning mm -hmm. by seven mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning I was full laboring and I was in the hospital okay um okay. and I get there and the nursing staff and the midwifery staff say to me oh no you know I can feel feel your baby's bottom not your baby's head when I had my oh. internal examination okay. so they were like you know your baby's breech um so we're gonna have to and I finished their sentence I said we're gonna have to have a um a c-section aren't we and they said yep yeah, exactly that's what's gonna happen so we're gonna get you into theatre um and we'll perform the c-section and I was really calm about it 
you know, they said to me they couldn't believe I took it in my stride. My husband and I were just really patient. We were waiting for the next step. Mm -hmm. So we go down to the theatre. We see the anaesthetist. I can never say that word properly. So forgive me if I like. I love how you said it. Beautiful. You, kidding me? I, you could say it again. I would just like use it as a <laughs> <The anesthetist. laughs> I love it. Uh, so um yeah, we, we get talking to him and he talks me through the procedure of what's gonna happen. So basically I was gonna have a spinal block injection uh-huh. into my spine. So my lower cavity or whatever you want to call it was gonna be then numb for them to be able to perform the C section. Okay. Um so I had my first lot of spinal block Mm -hmm. and they have to wait a few minutes for it to take effect um so he said to me can you move your legs so I both my legs were like that and I was like yeah I can and he was like oh okay well that's not going to happen so we're going to give it a minute and we'll try again so a few moments passed and he said right I'm going to administer another spinal block for you to get this going and I had to basically sit on the bed whilst contracting yep leaning right over feeling all sorts of nausea and stress and you know all of this and he does the second spinal and I feel something awful feels like it's going on inside me and I can't explain it and my husband goes white as a sheet. And I look at him thinking, what the actual F is happening here? Because if he's going white, something's going on. So it transpires that a load of white fluid is literally spewing out of my back. So I'm guessing spinal fluid or something. Oh my gosh. And he says to me, Carrie, can you move your legs? And, and I can move one. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, okay, something's not right here. Like it's not taken or whatever so he does a third spinal block on me oh my gosh and as this third one is administered something pops in my head so exactly here in my head I feel something pop okay and in exactly this moment third third one been administered pop in my head my waters break I poop myself I wet myself and then I have a baby's foot come out of my bits like all in this like one moment right (laughs) so and I'm freaking out thinking that this drug that they're putting in me is going directly into my baby because obviously she's still attached and all of this I'm freaking out Uh, and I'm still contracting and I can feel this baby wants to come out but it's coming out the wrong way so I'm freaking out my husband like looks like he's about to faint and my husband used to be a midwife so he can take this stuff you know like he's cool with this stuff so for him to be worried makes me really worried right um and they said okay this isn't working we're gonna have to take you down for a general anesthetic so I'm like great more drugs in my body like the baby's gonna have more drugs in its body right and all I can think about now is none of this pregnancy stuff that's going on but this instant migraine that I've got and I really felt like there was nothing else in the world apart from this excruciating like brain thing going on and obviously they knew that that was happening as well and they were shoving lines in me they were there was you know there were four people in the room and then there were like 18 people in wow. the room um and everybody's freaking out they're obviously trying to be calm but I'm a massive empath as well you know and I can pick up on this energy so I mean, it was just overbearing the amount of people that were physically in there, let alone anyone spiritual that was in there trying to be with me. Mm-hmm. I felt completely overwhelmed. Um, so then the anaesthetist says, you're going to need a general anaesthetic. We're going to need to take you down for surgery, knock you out. Um, my husband holds my hand wow. and, I, and, wow. I, and I say to him, save the baby. And he was like, don't be, t- don't be talking like that. And I said, darling, I know something's happening. Please pick the baby. Because I knew if something was to happen and I came to and I didn't have the baby, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to cope with that. 
So if there was a choice that he needed to make, I, I asked him to pick the baby, um, which obviously didn't go down very well with him. He obviously felt very uncomfortable with that. So they thought um, that I was brain hemorrhaging. So they give me, and, and obviously I don't know it, the account for sure because I was out of it, you know, I was yeah. in and out of it. Um, so the account that I've got is what they told me happened. So I do feel like there was a little bit of neglect here at some point, but it was 17 years ago and it's still, it's still like a difficult situation to kind of approach, but anyway. So they take me down, they put the mask on me, which is gonna administer the general anesthetic. And before I was out, I could feel, I was still awake and I, I was about to go under but I just felt this like massive calm, peace, serenity, warmth. And I remember beaming. I remember smiling so hard and so deep inside me that I knew whatever happened next was going to be cool. Whatever happened next was OK. It, it wasn't a drama. It wasn't the problem. I wasn't to be scared. And I went under. And this, I know you're not going to think this is crazy because you hear stories all the time, but if, if I were to explain this to somebody that one didn't believe in it or hadn't had the experience before, they would think I was mental, I'm sure. But I had, I had this most peaceful journey of walking into nothing but everything. Mm -hmm. It was, people talk about the light, like, oh, the light, like they're off their nuts, but... <laughs> I walked into a light like it was the most beautiful white love and I was presented with an option and it wasn't like there was a god sitting on a cloud that said you can have pack A or pack B uh -huh. it was more of an inner knowing and this place was so tempting it was so inviting it wanted me and I wanted it, you know, because in this place it was just warm and comfortable and eternal and it just felt so special. But I was able to make a decision. I could choose to go or I could choose to come back and, and wake up. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was a bit of a scramble there was a scramble with internally. I don't know what I was being. I don't know how I was behaving kind of like in the, in the real world, if you like. But I felt like I couldn't breathe and I felt like I was um, climbing. I don't know if that's the right word. Clambering mm -hmm. um, to make sure that I made the choice in time. So I, I feel like I had external pressure on me, like physically in my physical self oh. rather than in my spiritual self. That's really, I have not heard that before in an NDE, that, that there was like right. pressure to make it, you have to make it, you, your time is, your window is, is closing. I had a choice. But I did have, it was like, yeah, it, it was like, you've got a time frame. So make this decision before you can't make your decision anymore and we make it for you sort of thing. That um, is like seriously, Carrie. I've never heard that. That's pretty interesting. Okay. No, no okay, one has ever that usually, you know, there's like, oh, it'll be. And then when when the decision is made, then they're like, okay, done. <laughs> right. But I have not heard where you are, where you're sort of aware. You're it sounds like you were aware in both worlds. Like yes. it, did you feel that the pressure was coming from you or pressure was coming from outside from the light? to say okay um, no the light was all consuming and all peaceful like it wasn't pressure from there I feel like the pressure came from my physical body I feel like oh um I feel like there were different things going on with my brain activity or my physical you know because they were cutting me open they were taking a baby out they would mm. so they were getting all of all that stuff while I'm having this other experience and I feel like I knew that but I didn't know that do you know what? it's mm -hmm. weird but feel like that was all going on um and I obviously made my decision and 
I, I obviously chose my earthly my earthly life to be a mum and, and come back and right. mother my baby but it I woke up from that and I, I instantly knew what I'd been through it wasn't like it, I'd forgotten it and it was a dream but it still was like okay so I do know that that happened but did that did that happen? really happen yeah right and I didn't know what gender I was having and my husband came up to me um, and I think it was six or seven hours after my operation that I came round, um, and he said, and my daughter's called Willow. He Aww. said, Willow's got your nose. Um, and the first thing I said was, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, 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 that smile that I had, I don't think I'll ever forget how that felt, you know, that, that in, in itself feels like the light. If I ever need to remember what that feels like, I just need to remember how I was smiling because that smile for me completely um, makes my whole body remember the feeling of being in and choosing that moment in that light. Yeah. Did you um, when you were on the when you when you were um, in the middle of trying to make that choice? Do you remember any sort of like? um where you were or were you just in the light like do you remember it was, traveling to it or um yeah I had I had to travel to the light but it wasn't as much as like you're going to travel into a train station and you've got a destination to get through to get to the light it was it was there and I was always going to get to it and it wasn't like it was walking to it or anything like that it was coming to me if that makes sense mm -hmm. like I I guess I traveled to it, but I didn't move. Okay. It just kind of surrounded me. I'm curious, did your nan show up? Like, did you, were you able to see her there or were you just, they're like, this is it. Either you make the A or you make the B, you're coming, you're going, what are you going to do? She wasn't in the light. No, oh. there was no, there was no people in the light. It was just, I mean, the light itself is love. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, it, that's what it is it's just a thought for me anyway or you know we all have different experiences but it was just pure love and knowing and security and acknowledgement of being like it, it it's so hard to describe and I don't know if I'm doing a very good job of it but <laughs> I think you're doing no... fantastic I just want to say that you're doing fantastic it's a Thank you. yeah I think you do I think it's a hard it's it's definitely hard for people to understand what it's like in that space because we don't come and our world doesn't have that sort of a hundred percent love for anything or anyone. No, absolutely not. Yeah. But now I know it exists. I, I find it not that I do it often, but I know that I can access it. Yeah. So I know that if I, if I go into a, a really good meditative state, I can't even say that word. But I thought I you did a great job. You did a great job. I love that. It's my accent. Again, another it? ringtone. You know, it's like between an esthetist and a meditative. I would, uh, you could just <laughs> alternate that and be my ringtone. That'd be great. Um, but, you know, I think that taught me that I have the ability to access that, you know, and that I don't have to nearly be dying to be able to access that. Um, but you do have to get into a certain place to access that. It, it isn't in your everyday and it isn't something that you, if you have an, a, you know, if you've had an argument with somebody or if you're not feeling loved okay. that particular day, whatever weird human emotion you've got, it's not, it's not for that. Like mm -hmm. this is a whole different thing. This is next level love. You know, this is like love you can't describe. And did you, I, I'm, I'm sure you don't, uh, I, I, you know, it's interesting. How do you get in that state? How do you find yourself? When did, when you experience that state, you're going, I know you're, you're saying you feel it in your body and you get connected to that smile um, and that feeling that goes with the smile, but how do you get there in your life that can help people to, to understand that the light is around us? at all times it's just that's a really interesting and difficult question i know um, right sorry to put you on the spot yo <laughs> i mean you could have like warned me you were going to ask me no, that and I, 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 I don't know what i'm going to ask till i ask it and you're like Gee, i have no ideas just whatever um 
oh my god how mm-hmm. how um I don't think I don't know if you can I like, don't do you, I really don't do, do you like acupuncture binaural beats do you use any anything that like tries to soothe them as in the... trying to can I try and get there again to feel it mm-hmm. okay so that I can answer okay so that I have a very, very beautiful friend of mine who's a spiritual healer uh-huh. and she she can take me, she can talk me through into meditation. Mm-hmm. And on one occasion I'm thinking about, she we were we were talking and we were we were meditating on past lives. Um and it took a really strange turn and she talked me through the end of my life. Oh. And she talked me through the moment I pass. Um, and I, I, I was there again. I was in the same place with the same light and the same love. And she talked me, she talked me there, like down into that. She got me there, like, you know, um, and I'm, I'm learning to do it myself. Like it does take a lot of kind of stepping out of your, your norm and, and right. being able to really deeply meditate. And that is difficult. But she is wonderful, and she 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 manages to help me get there. Um, so I want to interview I her. <laughs> I want to love. She'd love. She would love to. I promise you, she'd love to talk to you. Okay, great, she's great. Wonderful. Yeah, I'll introduce you. That'd be um, yeah, she she really is wonderful. She's one of those really incredible people on this world that. Well, it's so selfish, but she completely gets me spiritually. You no, know, she's I, one of them. I love it. I love it. Um, so yeah, I have been lucky enough to feel it again. And how can that help other people? I, I don't know that everybody gets to feel it until they get to feel it. And that's the only time they get to feel it. Like, mm. I don't think everybody gets to feel it when then, un- unless they're dying, you know? Um, and although so this is this is a weird one for me. Although I didn't technically die when I had my child, I did go through the process of that, and I did have a choice to die or not. Um. So, unless I think people have gone through a near death experience themselves, mm-hmm. I don't know if they do get to feel it or understand it. Yeah, it's an, it's interesting. I um, <clears throat> I, I mean, I've, I've talked about this on when I've gone live, but well, I don't know. But I've I've experienced something close to this with angels, of like uh-huh. seeing light everywhere and in every yes. bit of our existence. And you know, yes. just and I always I always joke of like if I would have if I could stay in that state, I would marry a rock and be the happiest person in the world. I mean, I I feel like some of my ex husbands may have been rocks. <laughs> some of your ex-husbands how many of you had just two <laughs> but but I always joke and say well the next one here's my boyfriend this is going to be my next ex-husband so but I, try- I mean I'd quite happily marry a tree as well to be fair I mean the energy coming <laughs> off trees is just magnificent, it's magnificent. So and I love that you named willow willow trees are my favorite trees I love that as your dog my favorite tree too my yes. other daughter is called jasmine after the plant oh, nice the That's flower so beautiful <laughs> yeah that's a, that's yeah that's a that's a gorgeous name both of those I, I really I'll tell you, like that. I'll tell you what actually there was another time um that, and you've probably heard this from the other people that you've spoken to but there was another time that I came close to feeling it um but it wasn't my near-death experience if that oh. if that doesn't sound bonkers but I um I, I was carrying twins and I miscarried them oh. and um I I mean, that was a very dark period of my life and it, yeah, it, it was I, so consuming emotionally. But one of them, and, and he still comes back to me, like he's constantly with me. Nice. And whenever he comes to me, he's not constantly with me, but you know, I, I can access him. When he comes to me, I get it again. I get that light, I get that warmth, I get that, but not as much as I did when I had my experience, but it's kind of from the same box, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, I kind of get it a bit then as well. I love it. I think that, yeah, no, I think that's an incredible, I think that one sharing your experience, because it sounds to me, and you can, if you, if I'm characterizing this incorrect, please tell me, 
but the idea of like you just it's almost like walking into another room like you just oh actually probably yeah like you actually probably a foyer of another room because you didn't get to get into the room you just got to feel the feeling you're so right you are so right I got into the reception area reception area (laughs) and then they're like no get back (laughs) yeah exactly that you're not done here you need to wait till you need to wait till this baby's a teenager and you can't cope with her anymore (laughs) and that's when you're gonna have that conversation oh my god isn't that right holy Mm -hmm. cow I I think I think I want to let you know that and I don't want you because I I I recognize that that me saying how can you help people just even sharing your experience helps people sharing your experience with your twin with your baby and I'm so sorry for your loss that's a it's a very that's very difficult that connection is is very real from it's instantaneous so absolutely yeah so have so sharing that and sharing your 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 son on the other side coming and and having that it helps people to know that they can their people on the other side still come to them it you know sometimes that it's it's to them become aware of when all of a sudden you start to feel like you're a little bit calmer a little bit happier a little bit warmer um absolutely it's interesting with my nan because my nan um she always communicates always i say this like it happens all the time but when she she communicates it's always with my left shoulder and there's some sort of thing that i've not found out yet what this is all about but that's where she. let's talk about that for a second because that's actually like one of the things your guides will come in that way that's where they are able to give you energy they're like come in on your left side and give you energy oh okay yep so that's what's never the right never the right it's always the left yeah, yeah, that's what, always what she does. Well, the first time she, she, I was six or seven when she passed and she was only really young. She was 55 and she died of cancer. So I didn't know her terribly well because right. I was quite little. But um, she was quite formidable. Like you didn't mess about with her. You know, she, <laughs> she, she'd bloody tell you, you know. Right. Um, and, and she wasn't very, very maternal, my mum said. You know, she was, she was a mum and she was functional and she got on with stuff. But my mum would never sit on her knee and have a cuddle, for example. Ah. Um, so the first time my nan came to me, I was drunk. I was <laughs> nine. I was nineteen, and I was titting about with some mates, and I was being all leery and you know drunk and nineteen. And I got this slap on oh. my left shoulder, and I, I obviously freaked out. And I said to my mates, "Stop." messing about who's hit me on the shoulder you're scaring me and all my mates were upstairs in the flat saying we're all up here stop being an idiot and then I got that <laughs> sense of my nan telling me off to like rein it in oh, okay so that was the first time she came to me and then the second time was this right really mothering calming mm-hmm. you're going to be okay but I feel like as well it wasn't just the fact that I was about to have a baby I feel like it was a, a, a not a warning either but like a bit of an insight like Mm-hmm. So it's something's going to happen and but you're going to be okay and, and that's yeah. the sense that I got through that through that was it's you're going to be okay as, as okay as any human could be trying to go through this earth making the decisions at the right time in the right place doing the right things right you're <laughs> and giving birth to a breech baby at the same time yeah. a breech baby I mean I can't even but like the pop the foot the I mean come on all at the same time Honestly, that, that foot thing always makes me laugh because I, I tell my daughter this all the time. She cringes. I'm like, your foot was hanging out of my bits. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, I did have my C-section. So she came out that way, but they had to revive her because oh, she wow. almost died. Yeah. Yeah. She, um, she had so much drugs in her. She had three of the yeah. spinal blocks and she had a general anesthetic. Yeah. Um, so she, yeah, they had to revive her. She wasn't breathing for like ages wow I'm, I'm, I, yeah I'm I'm glad that you didn't have to witness that me too but my poor husband bless him and then thinking that he would have had to have chosen and that if he'd have chosen the wrong way I would have been pissed at him he didn't he couldn't have won <laughs> he <laughs> right he would not have won that's a that's a hard place for men to be in isn't it there's no winning. You're always in that position <laughs> you're always in that position there is no winning Carrie, I wish you were here. We would get along so well. We'd be like, yeah, I, I just want to live next door to everybody. That's what I want to do is be like, hey, 
<laughs> you well, when I found your lives, I really felt like I resonated with you. And then when you said you were doing these interviews, I was like, I, I want to tell you my story. It's not the most exciting of stories in the world, but it happened. I think it's and fantastic. I, well. I think it's fantastic. We <laughs> will not. I'm not going to don't compare your NDE to anybody else's no. NDE. You true, had an, a beautiful experience. And what I love I is how peaceful and calm and inviting. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I've spent my life being attracted to people that are not attracted to me. So the idea that the light wants you as you want the light is, is very, is very calming. Oh my God. It, it really did. And, and it was so inviting. Like I, I could have happily have chosen that. Yeah. It was, oh. it was actually it was harder to choose what I chose than it was to choose the other option. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think that, you know, once there's a foot, you fall in love with all of it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all the foot to everything, even the teenager and stuff. <laughs> she's actually, she's actually a great kid. She's 17 now. Oh, um, she's, she's a great kid. That's so wonderful. Carrie, I just love you. I, uh, I think you're absolutely amazing. And I'm so honored and just excited to, you know, uh, that, that to, one, to spend face-to-face -face time with you and, and two, to like share your story with the world. I think that it's, I, I really appreciate it. I know they'll appreciate well, it. I'm, I'm really grateful as well. I'm really grateful that we've had this opportunity. I've been wanting to tell you my story for ages. So I'm really grateful. I love it. I'm glad it worked out. Fantastic. Have a wonderful day and I will see you later. Oceans and waves and oceans and waves of love to you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye, Carrie. Thank you so much.